Hello everyone, here we are. We're gonna start the New Testament tonight. Now the first chapter is gonna be a bit of a genealogy, so bear with me and realize that these people's names are in the Bible because it's important to have them there and realize that these people had lives just like you're living today, okay? So they're important. Also, the Bible doesn't have a uh, shelf life, okay? It's eternal, it lasts forever. So hopefully I've got most of my crowd coming back that have already done the New Testament with me, coming back and staying with me to do it again because the Bible is always a revelation every time you read it. So let's get going. We're gonna do a few chapters tonight, probably one through four. So let's hear the beginning of the New Testament, which starts with Matthew chapter one. <clears throat> this is the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers, Judah, the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez, the father of Hezron. Hezron, the father of Ram. Ram, the father of Aminadab. Aminadab, the father of Nashon. Nashon, the father of Salmon. Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. If you remember, if you were with me in the Old Testament, you know that Rahab helped the spies that Moses sent out to look over the land of Canaan. She was also a prostitute. She was saved while the rest of them weren't once they went to war because she helped. Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth, Obed, the father of Jesse, and Jesse was the father of King David. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. Solomon, the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam, the father of Abijah. Abijah, the father of Asa. Asa, the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, the father of Jehoram. Jehoram, the father of Uzziah. Uzziah, the father of Jotham. Jotham, the father of Ahaz. Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah, the father of Manasseh, Manasseh, the father of Amon, Amon, the father of Josiah, and Josiah, the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the exile to Babylon. After the exile to Babylon, Jeconiah, Jeconiah was the father of Shealtiel, Shealtiel the father of Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel the father of Abihud, Abihud the father of Eliakim, Eliakim the father of Azor, Azor the father of Zadok, Zadok the father of Achim, Achim the father of Elihud, Elihud the father of Eleazar, Eleazar the father of Matan, Matan the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Joseph the husband of Mary. And Mary was the mother of Jesus, who is called the Messiah. Thus, there were 14 generations in all, from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the exile to Babylon, and 14 from the exile to the Messiah. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet didn't want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, Remember, they call all the generations from King David, sons of David, okay? And this is how Jesus came out of David's line. Now, it's not that Joseph, that his seed created Jesus, because we know that it was the Lord that created Jesus, but Mary was married to Joseph, and she was the one impregnated with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus Christ, okay? So he came from the line of David, however he got there, which we know he got there through God. My point being that just because it wasn't Joseph's seed that created him in Mary's womb, Jesus Christ still comes out of that line because Joseph, as we just read, comes directly out of the line of all of those people in the house of Judah. 
And so Jesus comes, is, was brought out in the line of King David. And of course, God would never have had it any other way because he adored David. Okay, so, and David is great and his name is still renowned to this day. So Jesus Christ was brought right out of the line of David and the house of Judah, which David was king of Judah, if you remember. And Judah was not Israel, even though they were all Israelites. Judah and Benjamin were the two tribes that made up the kingdom of Judah. And then there was the kingdom of Israel and because they were split in two. But then they were brought back together after the exile. So a digression there. Here we go. So Jesus came from the line of David out of the house of Judah is my point. And that's what that genealogy was showing you. It was showing you all the people in that line and how Joseph was the son of Jacob, the father of Joseph. The Now, once again, excuse me, this is not Jacob of Abraham. This is another Jacob. Matan, the father of Jacob, and Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. And Mary was the mother of Jesus, who was called the Messiah. So he came from that line. That was the, the house that God chose to bring him out of. Okay? All right. Um... All right, so an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you're to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they'll call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he didn't consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. Okay, so there you have it. All right, Matthew 2. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Herod, Magi, meaning kings from the east, came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who's been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Oof, wrong person to tell in King Herod, right? Because King Herod was a super hypocrite. And in this book here that I have, which I've shown you before, uh, when evil pretends to be good, hypocrisy exposed, Herod is pulled apart as a hypocrite. His hypocrisy regarding the Magi and their request, etc., etc., is pulled apart, and he is a great example of severe hypocrisy. So here we go. When the King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, of course, because he didn't want any other king threatening him, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem and Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written, quote, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Now, do you remember when we heard that? I was hoping it had a reference to it, but it doesn't. Okay. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said to them, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they heard, had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frank incense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. And there's the hypocrisy of Herod and the fear and the narcissism, etc. Okay? So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night, and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. 
When Herod realized that he'd been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious, and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he'd learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. Quote, a voice is heard in Ramah, weeping in great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. End quote. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who are trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father, Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee. And he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets that he would be called a Nazarene. Matthew 3. In those days, John the Baptist came, preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, quote, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him, end quote. John's clothes were made of camel's hair and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not think you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that doesn't produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who's more powerful than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he'll clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It's proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Matthew 4. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you're the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you're the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it's written, he'll command his angels concerning you, and they'll lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone, end quote. Jesus answered him, it's also written, do not put your, the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their splendor. All this I will give to you, he said, if you'll bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and angels came and attended him. Now let's look at this. How did Jesus defeat the devil? He threw scripture at him every time. He didn't rely on his own mind. He didn't rely on his emotion at the time. He picked a scripture and he threw it at him. And each time the devil backed off 
and the third time he left. You know, it's funny, in sales, I notice often that people will buy what I'm selling when I ask them for a third time. They'll say no the first time, they'll say no the second time, and the third time I ask, they will buy it. Now, a lot of salespeople are too afraid to ask that many times, and that's why they don't make it as sales in sales. Okay, so I know that, uh, so let's say this, let's say Satan bought it on the third time and split. He finally got what Jesus was saying and he, he left. Then the devil left him and angels came to him and attended to him. Okay, it's just a funny thing the way people do that. No, no, yes. Third time's a charm. All right, so Jesus got rid of him. The third time he finally stopped bothering him. When Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he withdrew to Galilee. Leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum, which was by the lake in the area of Zebulun and Naphtali. Now, we know all of this from the Old Testament. We have a good picture now of what Jesus is doing and where he is. Even if we don't understand the exact geography on a map, these names are familiar to us. And this is what I mean about the Old Testament coming up and putting some feet to your faith. To fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah, quote, land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people living in darkness have seen a great light, Jesus. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned, end quote. And that was Isaiah. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I'll send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Now, they're often called the sons of thunder, and there's a reason for that. It could be their personalities. Um, Jesus didn't call them that, but that's how they're, they're um, monikered by some scholars, the sons of thunder. Or maybe Jesus did call them that. We'll see. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, they were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness among the people. News about him spread all over Syria, and people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon-possessed, those having seizures, and the paralyzed, and he healed them. Large crowds from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and the region across the Jordan followed him him. And that's that. Tomorrow we'll pick it up at Matthew 5. I love you very much. I'm glad you're here. Stick with me, okay? There's always a new revelation. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.